This video goes with an um, additional topic that the pre-algebra students are doing. Uh, so this is solving equations with variables on both sides. I think you have to fill in the blank there on your uh, note sheet. So we're going to look at equations where you have variables in more than one spot. So it's the same goal. You're still trying to isolate the variable. It's the same, use the same tools, um, inverse operations to get the variable by itself, and the same golden rule of keeping things balanced. But now the one extra step is that you have to move all of the variables to one side first. One side of the equation. So find the variables. Let's look at some examples. Find the variables, like here I have x's on this side and I have x's on this side. I can't do the problem until the variables are just put together on one side or the other. So your steps here, and I should maybe, well, that was the only step, move the variables to all to one side. So um, we're still using inverse operations. I'm gonna use inverse operations to cancel these x's out and essentially move them all over here to combine with those x's. So the opposite or inverse of minus 2x or negative 2x would be plus 2x. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Cross out what cancels, rewrite and bring everything down. We're still showing all our work so we don't miss anything or get confused. So now on this side, I can combine negative 7x plus 2x and I get negative 5x. Now I'm back to just a one-step equation where I can uh, cancel things out to get the x by itself. So divide by negative 5 on both sides, and x is negative 3. Okay? So let's try one more as an example. I'm going to draw the line down the equal sign. I see that I have r's here and r's here. Now, technically, it doesn't matter if I put the r's on this side or if I move these r's over here. It doesn't matter if the variable is on the right or the left. Sometimes one way will make more sense, but you should get this, the same answer. So there's not a wrong answer or wrong side to put them on. In this case, if I move these, the negative 5r, over here, then all my r's will be on this side, on the left. Uh, so let's do that. Plus 5r on both sides. r plus 5r makes 6r. And then on this side, all I have left is the 18, and I'm back to my one-step equation to get r by itself. Just divide by 6, and r is equal to 3. Okay, so I think there are two more for you to practice. Let's take a look at them real quick before you pause. Draw the line down the equal sign. You have n's here and n's here. Think about which side to move the n's to. Probably makes sense to cancel out the n on this side and move them over to the right and then solve to get n by itself. And then on this one, I have x's on the left, x's on the right. Think about which way you would move um, the x's so that they're only on one side, combine together, and then solve to get x by itself. So go ahead and pause and then uh, come back and check when you're done. Check your answers. So pause now. Okay, let's take a look at the first one here. I canceled out the n's on this side, combined all the n's over here and got 2n. Then I rewrote everything, brought it all down. So I still have 2n plus 6 on the right side. Cancel out the plus 6 by subtract 6 on both sides. And then just uh, simplify, solve everything from there. And I got n is equal to negative 5. And this one, I canceled out the two x's on the right, combined everything over here on the left, and got negative 5x equals 19, and then just divided by negative 5 on both sides to cancel out and get x by itself. All right, so that's solving where you have variables on both sides of the equation. You might also see that now, again, with distribution, so distributive property. Um, so here we just have to distribute first and rewrite everything, and then we're still solving to get uh, the variable by itself. So remember, this means multiply whatever's out in front by the t whatever's inside the parentheses. So 0.3w plus 3 equals 1.8w. 
and I'm still, I see that I have W's on both sides of my equation. So I'm gonna move them or cancel them out on one side. Do the same thing on the other side and rewrite it. 1.8 minus 0.3 and then continue to solve to get the W by itself. And that works out to just be W equals two. Okay, I'll do one more and then let you finish the last one as practice. So again here, distribute first. Still draw your line down the equal signs. Six times four minus six times Z equals two Z. I've got variables on both sides, so I need to uh, cancel them out on one side, inverse operations. So now I have 2z plus 6z over here on the right makes 8z, and that's equal to 24. I finish solving to get z by itself, so divide by 8 on both sides, and I get 3. Okay, so you've got one more example here in this section. Pause and try this one. Distribute first, get your x's combined on one side or the other, and then finish solving from there. So pause now. Okay, so you can see down here I distributed first, rewrote it all in this line, uh, canceled out my three x's over here. That gave me positive x's. When I got down here and combined my x's, I had positive x's, so it made sense to put the x's on the left. And then cancel out your... Um, plus 10 there and I got x equals 2. So that's solving with distribution. Okay, a couple extra special cases now. Let's try this one. If I see this equation, I'm going to work to get the x's on one side or the other. So let's cancel them out on the left with inverse operations. And right away you notice that negative 4x plus 4x drops out. I've got no x's left. So really my equation says this. And neg error, sorry, positive 3 is never equal to negative 7. So in this case, actually we say there is no solution. This can't happen, right? So it doesn't work. Let's look at another one. Draw your line down the equal sign. Work to get your x's combined on one side. So cancel them out here. Bring them over here. These are gone these are gone, you end up with negative 5 equals 7. Well, negative 5 is never equal to 7, so there's no solution that will work. Nothing I put in here for x will make this true. Nothing I put in here for x will ever make that one true. So that's why we say no solution. Okay, so I think this is on your paper. This is what it looks like if there's no solution. How about this type? Now, if I start to work this out, <clears throat> let me distribute this and see what we've got. Looks like I would have, what, 12 divided by two. So this is six X plus four equals six X plus four. So you'll notice that the left-hand side is exactly the same as the right-hand side. That means anything you put in here for X is gonna work. It is always gonna be true. Okay, you could keep going and say, all right, well, let me cancel these out, minus 6x, minus 6x, cancel, 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 and you end up with this. Well, yes, 4 is always equal to 4, right? It doesn't matter what x is. If I put an x in there, it is always true. So we call this infinite solutions. Everything would work, okay? Here's another one of those. Right, distribute first to see what your equation actually is when you simplify it. 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3. If you notice that they are exactly the same, the left hand side is exactly the same as the right hand side, you got variables on both sides. When you try to solve that, you're going to end up with this, which is always true. So, infinite solutions. Okay. So you'll see that there are four more here on the rest of this video for you to try as practice um, for infinite solutions and no solutions. So pause here and then uh, come back and check those last four 
as practice. Okay, here's the first example. I canceled out the x's and ended up with this, which is never going to be true, so no solutions. <clears throat> this one I distributed first and rewrote it and noticed that the left side is exactly equal to the right side. You could keep working or you could say right here it's going to be infinite solutions. Okay, here's the next example. Again, distribute everything first. You always distribute before you start solving or simplifying things. Uh, and when I write this out, I notice the two sides match. They're the same. So infinite solutions. Anything you plug in here for B will work. And then the last one, distribute first, rewrite it, then start solving for V. Right, So I canceled the v's out on this side, but that also canceled them out on this side. You end up with this. 30 is never going to be equal to negative 4, so we say there's no solutions. Nothing I plug in there for v will make that true. So that's the end of this video. Thanks.